guys, my name is Anupama and welcome back to my channel, Lifeaholic. So today's video is actually going to be quite interesting. Now, we all can collectively agree on the fact that traveling can be one of the most eye-opening experiences that we all can have. And admit it, some of us, including me, have wondered if we can just keep traveling our entire life. I mean, how much fun would that be? That's exactly what makes today's video interesting because in today's video, we have a family of four, the Ayers, who have made travel a way of life and a way of learning. They have given up their lives in Pune, moved beyond the walls of society and have carved out a life for themselves and their two beautiful children, Ridan and Kwaish. They now live out of four suitcases traveling since 2019 and homeschooling or rather road schooling their children and giving them the best experiences that life can offer. They truly live by the saying that the joy is not just in the destination but in the journey itself and they have gone on to become one of the very few Indian families who have chosen a nomadic life for themselves homeschooling their children and I can guarantee you one thing that all four of them are having the time of their lives. So happy and so privileged to have Santosh and Anchal join us on this video and talk about their life, their experiences, their stories and spoiler alert, they have a lot of stories to share. And also Anchal has been blogging all of her experiences right from their travel diaries to life lessons to more about homeschooling. I will leave a link to her blog in the description box. So go check it out, be a part of their journey, learn more about them. So now without wasting much time, let's get straight into the video. But before that, you guys know what to do. Give this video a big fat thumbs up, like this video and also subscribe to my channel by clicking that red subscribe button and the bell icon next to it. So let's go. Hi, Ajil. Hello. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you on this video. Your story is really, really inspirational, uh, not just for people who want to lead a life like you, but also for people who want to choose their life and who want to go out of the box and who want to live their life on their own terms. So uh, let's begin right from where it actually began. And if you can just take us through what is the change because uh, you were in Pune and uh, you had everything that normally people would say is well settled. So you yes, had yes. a good job going, children, schooling, everything was set. And then what changed? If you can just take us back to the day when you actually decided that no, this is not what we want. First of all, thank you so much for uh, inviting me for this uh, interview. It all started uh, because of my kids. I never thought I'm talking and I'm talking about my husband as well. We never thought to have travel as a lifestyle for ourselves. It all started with our kids and it will go uh, on as long as our kids want. Then uh, having said that, if you want to pinpoint, that was the day uh, when my son just entered his uh, fourth standard and it was his first or second day of school. And we got a call from the teacher and she said that I wanted to meet. I want you to come and meet. So we went there and we, I saw my son standing in front of the teacher with his head down and the teacher telling me, do you know that, you know, I gave a test to your son, to the, all the kids and I'm talking to all the parents. This is not done. I said, what did he do? He said, out of the 10 questions, he did four questions wrong. And it took me five minutes to understand wh what was so wrong in this. And she was a class teacher and I was like, hey, ma'am, so what is the matter with it? So like if, if it, it is a third standard question and if he's, you know, six questions wrong means 60%. So he's not, you know, there. How will he compete with the world? How will he go about, you know, until he scores 90%, how will you, how will you see him where you want to see him and all that. And I saw my son, you know, embarrassed, feeling guilty and, you know, promising me every two minutes, then mama, don't worry, I won't let this happen again. And for a, for a while, I was like, why all this fuss? He did six questions right. Then it came to a point wherein I felt very bad for, a, for the embarrassment that my kid had gone through because we have all been through this. I've gone through these days wherein my teachers used to complain about me to the uh, parents. And I felt that, that, that feeling is so bad. I did not want my child to go through it. 
and yet i was standing there in the same position doing the same thing and get, allowing my child to go through the same feeling that i went through my parents were not that exposed to the modernization probably you can say or, or the technological advancements but we are and if we put our kids into the same rat race that we were put through then i guess i my kids will never forgive me that was a trigger point uh, we did not say anything in instantly we did not came to a conclusion instantly firstly we thought probably the school is wrong and we started searching for different schools every school i went to and i'm talking about seven eight good schools of pune um, and i'm not blaming the schools i'm blaming the education system everybody promised me my own kid with a higher marks and this was not what i was looking for so and then i knew that school is not the option then i started researching and i came across home schooling and we uh, it was a very conscious decision in india it is it was a rebellious decision so for us it was a very big step that we took uh, i spoke to my kids they were okay with it and we were like very sure that this is a home schooling this is this is not unschooling you're not going to be free the whole day so we did this experiment for an year and within a year i realized this this was the best decision of my life i realized that my kids have a lot of time to spare they are working they are looking at different apps they are looking at discovery plus they are looking at, across different um, learning experiences they are going through and that's when we realized that we have to give them a broader sky we have to give them something beyond the four walls of our house and travel was the only thing that we realized will will help them explore different cultures different people uh, you know uh, happiness sorrows from all walks of life travel is the only thing that can truly liberate and their learning experience okay. if you want to ask me that's how it all started okay a lot of people kind of think the way you do but they don't um, they hi hey, <laughs> now that both of you are here so i would like to ask that uh, when you made this decision uh, a lot of people think in a similar way but there are a lot of things that come in their way like they think that he if i was single i could have done this but now that now i'm married now i have kids it's not a long term these are excuses these are not reasons <laughs> so how do you actually manage i mean not just the education part but the whole lifestyle along with that it brings a lot of challenges i'm sure and also how do you manage uh, monetarily uh, see the first part is uh, regarding the challenge that we don't settle in one place and we keep traveling this is a choice that we made it's it's not a challenge for us because this is what we want and we are doing it so we are actually happy so it so happens that if the place is not very serene or not very beautiful where we are staying so we plan for two months or three months or probably six months but probably in a month's time we start feeling bored that we have to go to the next destination so that also happens and it is usually not us who do that it's basically our kids they say this is too crowded no we don't want to stay here we'll go somewhere more serene this is what they come up with so that is that is the first part second part um, with regards to the financial as in monetarily how we are managing it see uh, i was working in an it company uh, i have 11 years of experience working in a proper it company settled in one place uh, my wife she was doing her, her own business but we understood one thing that if uh, we do a 9 to 5 job then uh, traveling as such is not possible one home schooling yes we might do but traveling is not possible and even for home schooling home schooling like is it's like a a full time job so one parent has to completely focus there so since my wife was doing business we decided that uh, i'll leave my job and uh, i'll start helping uh, in expanding her business so that way both the parents will be at home with the kids so that one parent can fully focus on the kids monetary challenges there are a lot of challenges and i'm not i'm being very honest with that but again as he said it is a choice that we make i i could have either uh, stocked some amount in my bank or i could have traveled but my only uh, clarification to this is that it is as challenging as it is in your in somebody's stable life our only mantra is that if you want to uh, live happily in then either of the two things have to happen either you have to increase your income or you have to decrease your expenses 
So we have decreased our expenses to a minimalistic lifestyle where we are living in basics. Okay. So it's basically a lifestyle choice. Either you can accumulate more more stuff at home and pay EMIs and stuff. Like this is not something we force our kids to do, but our kids they know what how much they can carry. So if they know if they have something in their hand and they find something very beautiful uh, in a particular shop, they don't ask for it. They would rather they rather say that okay I cannot carry that everywhere I go so rather I would go and spend in something eating so we go out and have a lot of fun but our fun is different we don't stock uh, stuff we don't accumulate stuff we just have something to eat we travel we see beautiful scenery and we enjoy yeah. so it's just a matter of priority what you prioritize and it is not wrong that if somebody is uh, not living this way of life yeah 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 it's, it's uh, like, we have yeah, lived that right. that that exact life uh, some years back. till some years back now we feel that you know we started very late we couldn't have been more happy if we would have you know started when we just we were yeah. just married yeah it's a lifestyle choice but one thing about um, homeschooling and uh, for the kids is uh, that you must i'm sure you must be coming across a lot is uh, since your kids are not going to a school how are they getting that kind of an exposure and uh, how social are they socializing <laughs> how are they going to face a lot of other people when they you know get into their careers and their jobs and all so what would you like to say through your uh, channel i would like to really tell this thing to everybody because we also get to uh, hear such this question so much this is the biggest myth a person's a person to be able to socialize is a matter of choice of an individual if i am an introvert i will not be speaking in in a class full of people as well if i am an extrovert i can make a friend from whatever age it is my daughter has one of her closest friend is 56 year old granny one of our landlords so that does not depend on the only on the environment it also depends on the person if i am my son is an introvert person he is not introvert i would not say he's to be selective see socializing um, i don't think it just comes uh, through uh, contact as in in classroom or something we are traveling we are meeting people outside we are meeting people from different cultures different lang- speaking different languages and our children interact with them and believe me uh, we uh, i'm basically our son uh, he is into online classes like right? as in uh, he learns french sanskrit sanskrit so all this he does on does online and uh, we did scratch programming as well for him he is the most a uh, talkative person in his online sessions as in he is the person who asks maximum number of doubts so he is one person who is very open when it comes to interaction it's just that i mean this is the biggest myth not just with us because we are traveling but as such people think uh, home schooling kids they are not they, they cannot be uh, social, socially active. socially active or they don't socialize it's not so yeah when needed a person will socialize so it's i think we should respect this choice of children when we are forcing a child to do <coughs> something that they are not very comfortable doing just because we thinks that it is right we are basically uh, giving um, we are basically not uh, doing justice to his learning experience this is a very logical thing we have been forced for the longest time i don't know how many people would agree to it but for the longest time i did not know what i wanted to do in life i i studied to earn i uh, joined a company to earn and this is the this is the uh, worst way to go about it which we all realize it but we still like we crib on mondays what are the mondays blues if you love your job basically there are no mondays there are no weekends and i it should money should be a by product of what you love doing not the other way around. see frankly 90% i'm i'm being very generous when i say 90 90% of the people who are uh, earning money they're not doing something that they like see for example i did my graduation in computer science then i did my mba then i was working in a bank in sales then i went into technical writing and became an it and became an it professional so what i studied and what and how i earned it has no connection whatsoever so maximum cases 90% of the people are doing that there are hardly anyone who says i'm very satisfied with my uh, work that i'm doing because they're working for money yeah see that is a practical part you need money to run your house there are emis going ghar ka emi cars emis everything is going on so you need money for that but in the end they are not very happy instead we would like our kids to do something that they like and earn money as a by product 
we could not do that at least we want our kids See, to because do that. gone are the days when uh, you had to do a job to earn money to run your house mm-hmm. today the thankfully the world is such that if you have a skill there is a market for you yeah you it can sell opened up much more yeah yeah so that is what so we are exploring that there are many many more options than a regular 9 to 5 job then why do we have to push them for a regular study we have we have been the rat race we or as parents we want better for our kids why to put them in the rat race and i am not at, we are not at all advocating home schooling or road schooling for everybody what we are advocating is think beyond what we have done we have to give them one step ahead but what we did was rebellious for others for us it was something that we thought beyond absolutely the biggest teacher that you will be having is travel so i think the biggest teacher for your children are going to be travel and the experiences that they come across and the different cultures and the different people um absolutely i would like to know if there has been any one instance or one place or one moment which has stood out the most which has really touched your heart you know you have been traveling and travel is filled with such moments so if there has been any such kind it's such moment it could be something very small also so anything that you can recollect yeah, yeah. um uh, last year we were in uti not exactly uti 5 km below uti called kethi a very small almost 200 all odd houses ka village hai, and it's a beautiful village and uh, we were living in a, a very nice farmhouse owned by two uh, retired sisters for the first time my uh, kids were exposed to poultry farm so in, every morning my daughter used to just run to the poultry farm along with the landlord she used to call her and she used to just play with the chickens she understood how big a pain it is to m- manage a poultry farm from you know making their getting their food uh, making their food to feeding them meanwhile to keep them warm in that cold weather all those small small things that she learned and the compassion that she, it has brought In, that has come into her because of that you know that those small chickens taking care of them playing with them my son used to help in removing the carrots from the vegetable garden and the kind of hard work that he had to go to uh, in doing that under the sun was ma- what it helped him realize you know the importance of all the laborers who are working on the field the farmers who are working on the field the whole day you know the compassion he used to bring come home take a bottle of, instead of having a glass of water he used to take a bottle of water to give it to everybody else as well it's a very small instance yet it has for us it has impacted a lot i would have taught him to serve water to everybody but it if it comes from him from his uh, own self it's a learning for him my kids are very scared of uh, ants and my daughter was like very scared of ants she saw a spider this big in the poultry farm okay so she uh, there were and it was a farmhouse so there were there were supposed to be spiders and all sorts of insects so there was a time when she was very scared she used to jump on the bed then it came to because every day she used to see it so it came to a point when she was not that scared she just used, used to move around then it came to a point wherein she started um, counting her legs the legs of the spider then she started you know feeling bad for the spider you know that uh, we might kill it let's not kill it it came to a point where she was still not touching the spider but uh, ordering us to ensure that the spider is not killed and thrown out of the house that for me it's a transition yeah these are the entire these small parts that shape the entire personality of the person when they grow up the compassion that uh, we really want in uh, to our kids to have i'm seeing that it is coming and we are not teaching it that's the best part in udaipur uh, we saw this that we had gone out it was really hot in udaipur and uh, suddenly my son told papa give me 20 rupees he took uh, money he went uh, to a shop bought a uh, uh, chocolate milkshake and there was a small boy who was standing outside so he ran and gave it to him the boy, that boy was so happy he took it and ran towards his family and looking at that my son and my daughter they were both were so happy so that was something that we did not expect him to understand but yeah he saw he experienced it he experienced the heat he knew how problematic it might be for uh, uh, the the poor people and he saw that child and he he of his own accord he asked money he bought the milkshake and he gave it to her this could not have happened had we were not walking with them we walk around for say for 6 7 kilometers we walk 
every day. So when you're passing through a place by a car, you get you tend to miss a lot of experiences. However, when you're walking, you literally living that um, moment every minute. You know, looking at around, looking at the people. You see everybody. You look at everybody. But yeah, these are very small experiences which I think are I could not have given him. I could have only taught teach him. You know, teaching is not. Uh, something that works until you practice. Thanks to travel, we don't even have to practice. They see it, they experience, it, and they do it on their own. good, bad, like ugly. Practical learning on the go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, while traveling, what is your general approach? Like, do you guys travel with a plan, or uh, do you just like take it one day at a time? Or do you have a plan that I want to go here and here and here? How is it? No, we don't have a plan at all. What we know is that we have to keep traveling. uh the place is decided by our kids so uh, we, uh my kids give us uh, a small presentation on the laptops uh of the uh, for uh, two places any two places that they choose they have to give the reason in their presentation why are they choosing the place what are the pros and cons what is the weather what are the good places to eat what are the good places for to go and why do they want to go there and out of the two places based on the financial uh, uh, comfort and everything we select one thing and for us the major criteria is internet should be uh, the network should be good there so because we basically work on laptop okay so what we do is we just okay. try to find out what network is good in that particular place once that is done we decide and then we go and uh, about your accommodation and all that we try and search for accommodation we speak to people tell them about us and uh, yeah we have to make uh, more calls than regular people We, for example, if we make ten calls, fifteen calls, hardly one person agrees to. Nine people put down the call, knowing that we are nomad families. They don't understand the concept of nomadic lifestyle, and uh, hardly one or two respond. And people who respond with the, our kind of lifestyle, they basically are mentally um, there with us. So it becomes then it becomes very easy. So we we know this is the most difficult part of our travel. I would say finding your accommodation. but then again it's a choice and what we require is a very basic accommodation so that also helps a lot in terms of us getting one once we reach a place we are done in one day but then one day of rest the next day onwards every all the struggles everything go away it goes away because my kids are excited to visit the new place you know to travel the new place to explore the new place anything that uh, you would like to tell people who really want to actually move away from the you know uh, the box that society has made and uh, they want to explore what is outside the box and they want to live life but are a little skeptical of uh, you know how what would people think and what would people around say and the reaction of people your story is so inspiring i am sure that it is going to be so inspirational to a lot of people watching this video what is the one advice that you would like to give them i don't think we are very um uh, when experience you have to give advices however uh, when the very uh, first line that you said you know a lot of people want to start they want to go out of the box i think going out of the box as a reason is not enough the reason has to be really really strong the motivation has to be really really strong otherwise uh, one challenge and you that entire resolve will go away so you My, cannot you yeah. cannot uh, move with uh, i mean you cannot move with legs on two boats that you cannot do you have to be either on this side or that side if you try to balance both it it is not possible we have, I, we have faced a lot of challenges anupama and the only reason we are able to still do it and really want to do it is because our motivation is our kids I don't want to do it for a for travel. Uh, we are not doing it for an out of box lifestyle. We are not doing it to uh, rebel with the society. We are doing it because we want to give a, our kids a different life from what we have got. This motivation is not allowing us to stop. If anybody wants to go and or, or take another any path which is out of the uh, race, the motivation has to be really strong. Uh, there was a time when we were thinking of not selling off our stuff. take a room on rent dump everything there so that you know wherever we want to come back we can come back and get you know, we'll have our stuff and that's when uh, he told us that there is no point till the time we'll have an anchor at a place one problem we'll one challenge we'll run back and back will not be free like True. if you have a safety net then you won't be able to move forward
Absolutely. Better not to have a plan B. <laughs> yeah, yes. The, so the plan, plan, plan A works. Plan A will not, yes, you won't. You won't give your hundred percent to make the plan A work. Yeah. I'm okay with a lot of people not agreeing to it, but it has helped us a lot. We are able to take all the challenges, accept them, and adapt to it because we know that we don't have any other thing to do. See, this is our way of thinking. We people might disagree with us. By God's grace, it has worked for us till date. Don't know about the future. Let's hope it will be good. <laughs> all the very best for your future and to your kids as well and thanks a lot for joining anchal thank you anupam for- thanks a lot oh my god so many stories that anchal and santosh could share with us and i'm so happy that i could put out their stories to you guys and i'm so glad that they agreed to do this video i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you could get inspired by the story of this lovely family If you did enjoy today's video do not forget to give this video a big fat thumbs up and also do not forget to subscribe to my channel by clicking that red subscribe button and the bell icon next to it until we meet again next time stay tuned bye